Who's your boy Goku in the building? Who else we got in the building? Your brother Akin in the building. Your brother today, yeah? I'm a brother today. Fantastic. <laughs> We've got a special guest in the building. A special guest, man. Sammy in the building. Just give us a quick, just a quick intro. Who, who are you? I'm just a little boy from Nigeria. <laughs> Into that. Cool, my name is Sammy. I'm a property developer. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, we're gonna get straight into your story because we're in Hill Hub today. Um, fantastic building, but we we'll get into that. <laughs> um, before this became anything, just take us back a few years when you first started. Because, um, like you said, you're Sammy, a little boy from Nigeria. <laughs> take us all the way back to what's your background? Where did you grow up? Um, yes, yeah, back there, I guess. Yeah, I, I grew up in one of the best countries in the world, mm. which shout out to anyone from Nigeria listening to this podcast. <laughs> from Lagos, Nigeria, moved into the UK when I was 19. Okay. Got my first job in McDonald's, uh, flipping burgers. <laughs> uh, and now a lot of articles have gone out about me flipping, from flipping burgers to flipping properties. So uh, a very interesting story of having to work out to see that mm. I can achieve what I've been able to do today. But this all still comes from the grace of God right. and how God has helped me on my journey of being what I'm currently doing. Mm. Okay, cool. Taking it back there, so you said you, you came from Nigeria, you flipping burgers. Now, how did you even, what, what did, from flipping burgers, what was the next step? And did you go to uni? Mm. Was it, you, when, did you, when, when did you move to the UK as well? It was, I think, probably now, it was like 20-something years ago. I can't even remember. Wow, yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. Uh, I remember my first ever coming into the UK. My sister had a salad in Peckham. Mm. And Peckham back in those days was, was notorious for a lot of stuff. And people were very mindful of not joining a gang and yeah. being involved in stuff. And my sister was saying to me, you might need to learn how to build Baba. I thought, this is not going to be me. There's no <laughs> be way. A yeah, there's no way, no way, no way. And I remember a guy coming into the salon. He works in McDonald's or Ken Road. He was one of the managers. His name, I'll never forget him. His name is Uncle Sam. Mm. And he said to my aunt, he said, Oh, I'm happy to offer him a job in McDonald's. Mm. And obviously, coming from Nigeria, McDonald's was like, Wow. Okay. I've never had a job. I uh, only work with my mom, uh, which was part of the journey because I worked. After leaving secondary school, I worked with my mom's business. She had about three businesses. I was able to learn. I think my old journey of an entrepreneur started from working with my mom. Mm-hmm. She kind of gave that foundation for me to kind of understand business. Okay. And seeing an opportunity to work at McDonald's, I was like, wow, that's awesome. My first ever job was £3.25, £3.25p. I remember my pay slip at McDonald's back in those days. Uh, and just getting a job in working at McDonald's was huge because mm. a lot of people back back in those days, we just didn't have a lot of jobs as young people. Yeah. Obviously, just fresh from the boat from Nigeria. Yeah. I could still speaking like yeah, Colin, Sodok, yes. Southwark, all of those <laughs> kind of stuff. <laughs> <theater>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and learning all that. And having the opportunity of, McDonald's was a basic start for me. Mm. And because I knew where I was coming from and something that, uh, I would always say about what has helped me in my journey was the faith aspect of me knowing that I needed to see that McDonald's was the start of God's plan for me. Okay. Uh, I always believe in one word that resonated with me. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. They're good plans and not of evil. Mm-hmm. So I know it was part of his plan for me to see that I could understand the basic stuff of how to learn, understand the system. Mm-hmm. So McDonald's gave me that foundation mm-hmm. from a start I, I could Easily, I, I was able to learn how to work on the till. Yeah. I was able to learn how to work on a grill, making Big Mac. Mm. A lot of people used to come to McDonald's okay, when I give them free burgers and all that. Mm. It was it was, it was, was funny because there was so much to learn. Mm. And within like three, six months, they were speaking to me about making me uh, an assistant, shift manager. There was a lot of process of me coming in to become a manager eventually. But I knew where I was going. I knew McDonald's was a step for me yeah. to, into getting into my, my first ever job. And that was how the journey started for me in McDonald's. Yeah, that, that was my next question, what you was about to touch on. So would you say when you was in McDonald's, did you see who you are today back then? Or were you able to kind of visualise where you was going? Or it was just a case of, I know this is God's plan. Just gonna keep pushing. I think something important from when I was growing up was understanding poppers mm-hmm. and understanding that there's there's a part of, of of there's a part that you need to understand about God helping you align your purpose. Right. And uh, I'm a big believer in something called fate, mm-hmm. which uh, the, the the good word says fate is a substance of things not sent. Uh, I could easily, from a very young age, understand where I was going. The pattern of me knowing that 
I had a bigger plan. I had things I needed to do, but right. how do I get to that place? Right. How do I get to a position of starting a business? How do I get to a position of getting a good job? Because back in those days, it's not like you guys are lucky. It's easy to get a job, start a business. Back in those days, you can never think of starting a business. The uncles yeah. we knew were like cab drivers. Yeah. They were like all uncles doing cleaning job, uh, aunts working as some like basic job that didn't really make sense. So you just couldn't dream I, but... Right. I had this thing which uh, changed a lot for me. I, I'm a big believer in reading books, okay. and I used to read a lot back, 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 back then working at McDonald's. I I knew where I wanted to be, mm-hmm. so I started making plans, reading and studying mm-hmm. stuff, which I'll probably talk about. A very important book. I always mention that in any, every podcast I do. That changed a lot for me was a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad, mm-hmm. and that literally yeah, changed yeah. changed a lot for me. And yeah, so. And that was the beginning of saying that my dreams of where I needed to be, I started changing that. And there was also another book by Ben Carson, which is uh, on uh, uh, Dreaming Big. Is it the dream, Big Dreams or something about dreams? I, I also read that kind of changed a lot for me. So, yeah, that was the process of me believing I can get into where I am today. So I saw that and I saw the future ahead because I understood that faith was what I needed to be able to get to where I am today. So did you go to university? I did. So back in back in the days, like I had, I did. Uh, I went to sit in Eastern in college, uh, university. I, I was so there's a part of what I would say to people about in the process of having to work, having jobs and all that. We didn't have a focus of what we we're doing. Mm-hmm. So for me, the first that was I needed to get a good job. Uh, then IT was the key stuff. Right. So I went to uni, wasted my time studying IT. <laughs> and because you had people doing like Cisco, Java, some crazy IT courses that didn't make sense. And I just thought, okay, if I'm going to be successful, like all those big uncles and aunts I'm seeing, everyone is saying, go do something in IT. Mm-hmm. And I went into IT, I never liked it. It right. just wasn't for me. And I had to switch over to studying business management, which that was business management for me then started activating what I needed to, to do. So it was for me reflecting on this is where I am. I'm a business person. I, I, I knew the act of selling stuff. From having to leave McDonald's, I started doing my own business. I started selling stuff. So it was that act because it didn't, it didn't, it didn't just start from uh, where you guys see now. Yeah. McDonald's was a process of me selling even on the till. Because you have people coming in and saying to you, oh, can I have hamburger? Can I have this? So you could understand the act of sales, of having to understand how to know, okay, why do you want hamburger? Let me sell more money. Let me sell more. Because if I sell more, I get I also get a commission. And the process was there for you to know if, you're t- if you end your till on time, yeah. you get something back, you get a bonus back. Okay. So I could understand the sales process of having to sell stuff. So which later was the vehicle or the catalyst for me to get into my own business as well. Okay, okay. So you said you started some early business. Like, do you want to just talk through? Yeah, it, it, it was interesting. My leaving McDonald's, I, I was always... Cause the, the, the 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 plan for them in McDonald's then was Sam is gonna be a manager. We're gonna train him. I'm like, nah, I'm a, this is not for me. This is just not gonna be for me. But I made sure that my next line of action was I I was able to. So people started telling telling me about Can I Wolf. Can I Wolf was just being built then, and there was an opportunity for me to go get a job as guess what, working in Can I Wolf. What do you think? Sub assistant, assistant, and security guards. I was gonna sell. I was gonna give hundred pounds, but I didn't say that. But you got it right. It was security guy. So, <laughs> so it was that was a, it was more of that. I I just said I was so I was so glad from three pound twenty five. I think I left McDonald's at five pound ten p. So the job that can I work was security guard they were paying I remember £12.75 as a stat so I went for my interview remember £5.10 to £12.75 that was a lot of money and I was still young and I just thought this was a good opportunity first round of interview I passed the second interview I was then told that Sammy you're too short if you can see, you're probably taller than me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, what? I was too short to work as a security guard. So that kind of put me away. I then told, okay, I would have another goal at another security firm. In, uh, in funny enough, it's so funny, because I have a building in East Linton in Camden, very close to the same security wow. firm I was working for. And I went to work for first, first security guard. Yeah. And uh, I got a job then, and I was able to go to uni, studying at the same time while working. And... While I was doing that, 
I started lending the act of buying cars and selling cars. Okay. So I started saving up a lot of money and I used to go to auctions. So I go to I go out of London, buy cars from out of London. They used to be a place by Old Ken Road, close to Aben Road. Okay. The park, what's that park called now? There's a park on Old Ken Road. Uh, yeah, yeah. So back in those days, we used to be able to leave our cars there. Right. So cars were in like there's no tax or MOT. Oh, okay. So we leave it. We will put a sign of uh, cars for sale. Yeah. We get people calling. Then we used to have this magazine called the Loot. The Loot, you guys will never know that. That's that's. So we used to sell. So I used to put a lot of cars in the Loot papers. The Loot papers then changed. We then had Auto Trader. So Auto Trader was a magazine. Oh. So I used to put a lot of cars in order to trade that while I was still doing my other job because I was saving up, saving up, buying cars, selling two cars, three cars. I remember the car that changed it for me was a Volks, Volkswagen. Mm. I sold one Volkswagen and made about £17,000. It was That was huge. That that changed a lot for me. Wow. So uh, in my selling cars as well, then something else I was doing was I was also selling laptops. Mm. So I had an uncle of mine that I worked for so my IT, a bit of my IT background came from him. I used to work for him in uh, Norwood Junction, uh, six I Street, No S25. I remember that, and I then started learning how to. That was the that was when la- like laptop just started coming into the UK. Apple laptop. I bought one Apple laptop and I made I made a pro- it was crazy profit. So I then started buying more laptops, Dell laptops, selling them on, on eBay. Wow. Then we had eBay come true. Wow. eBay came true. eBay was really, I made a lot from eBay and paper. Yeah. So I started putting laptops on online and selling a lot on eBay. Uh, internet changed a lot because that was the easy way for me to start selling stuff. And I started selling, buying and selling and buying and selling. Wow. They moved over to a great opportunity in Nigeria okay. uh, when we had this new guy coming to power uh, or passenger. passenger, so he was able to open up the telecommunication stuff. Yeah. Then I started buying Nokia phones, thirty three ten, seven two two ten, shipping off to Nigeria. Yeah. My bro- we had we had the we had the first uh, mobile phone shop in Parakot. We had another one on the mainland in 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 Tony Street. Uh, before we had Computer Village. So we start, I started shipping a lot of phones to Nigeria mm-hmm. from the UK, making a lot of profit from that. The margin was huge because people didn't really have. They didn't have what you have in Nigeria now called Computer Village where they sell phones now. Oh, yeah, so yeah. we were able to take advantage of going into the market early. And yeah, so that was the growth of yeah. where I got a lot of uh, capital to kind of set up uh, where I am today, yeah, which yeah. we'll so talk you about. Mean, you, you sound like you, you had no social life. With everything you're saying now, it's <laughs> not like you are just business, business, business. How did you drown out the noise and everything going on around you? I'm sure you had friends, yeah. I'm sure... You had people that weren't doing what you were doing. I'm sure maybe you had people that were focused like you as well. Like, how was that kind of growing up and trying to, you know, work between doing business and just being like? I think something very important where you kind of know where you're where you're going to, and you know your drive, and you kind of understand. I need to be at this particular position in my life where I know that it would take me time. Mm. I remember, I don't know. I've, like there was no, there was no Godfather. Right. There was nothing guiding you through. Right. But you know, like you need to work as hard as you can to be able to get to the next step you want to. Mm-hmm. And like I said to you back in those days, it was more of like you had friends in the gang and different stuff. And you want to be very mindful of where you where you're going to. And I always remember something that my father used to say to us about know the kind, know the son of who you are, right. and just making sure you kind of protect your image and understand what you're trying to drive at. So for me. It was more focused around getting into the journey, build what you're trying to do. Eventually, when, you, when you're when you there, it becomes easy for you to enjoy life. Right. So it was a sacrifice for me then to be able to see that I didn't really need to enjoy life as much. Mm-hmm. A lot of my friends were out there clubbing, oh, partying, yeah. spend the money on uh, different stuff. But you just knew, my, my focus was I knew where I was going to, and that was the aim. And I was pressing towards that focus as well. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that you're used to... Oh yeah, so we still build in Nigeria because the, the, the margin in Nigeria is, is fantastic in terms of when we develop in Nigeria, we'll make over 100% return in Nigeria. So the market is still great in Nigeria. No, so you just literally build from 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 scratch. Yeah, from, yeah, from ground, yeah, development stuff. So we build like currently we have in a pipeline about. Uh, 15 townhouses we're building mm-hmm. so we, we do the same thing we do in the UK so yeah. similar to stuff we do it would be nice no I would even take you guys on a tour you would love it uh, there's a lot of stuff coming to Nigeria there's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff a lot of opportunities as well in Nigeria 
Dunkle, oh, Dunkle so that's the Lekki one. So Lekki yeah. Le- is going to a massive in time of even having an airport in Lekki as well because yeah, in Lagos, yeah, you only have one airport. Yeah. So there is uh, there's an airport coming to to Lekki. There's also the the free train zone in Lekki as well. So there's a lot of opportunities yeah. in the Lekki uh, in the Lekki area. Yeah. Lekki free train zone going towards Aja. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunities. From people from the UK, you think it's worth getting involved or is it? Yeah. What I would say to people is obviously understanding real estate is a no, is, is is about numbers mm-hmm. and long term view. Yeah. If you know you've got money, you know you probably can't buy something in the UK for ten thousand right. pounds. You can still buy a land for what eight to nine million naira in Nigeria. Right. So why keep the money in the UK mm-hmm. when you can invest and buy something in Nigeria? Yeah. So you can always look at it. Does because one key thing about I, I, I always emphasize on this ownership. Mm-hmm. There's just no point of you leaving. Mm-hmm and not having to own something. And if you're ever going to think of legacy, Mm -hmm. ownership is key. Mm -hmm. Owning a piece of real estate Mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. It might be in Nigeria, it might be in South Africa, it might be in Zimbabwe. It's the same thing Mm -hmm. because it's long-term, depending on what you're trying to do. Because it's a long-term investment, imagine what you bought. I remember things I bought 10, stuff I bought 10, 15 years ago yeah. and looking at the value today. Yeah. Because with Nigeria, it's a long-term plan, mm. which is the same thing for real estate in the UK yeah. as well. But a lot of people just think it might be short-term. Yeah. You just have to have different structures and different right. ways or plans of what you kind of think about. I guess the main question people have from UK people going there is just the element of trust. And safety and how, do you, how do you feel about that? Do you think it's trust? <laughs> is, it, is it better uh, now? I, I'll say this because I'm very into, I'm, I believe in a new Nigeria mm. and I believe that we are the people that might be able to bring the change mm-hmm. as people from a diaspora yeah, that yeah. understand structure system. We've been able to see that this thing works in the UK mm-hmm. and we can be that change. Mm-hmm. And gradually things are changing mm-hmm. because we can see that most of the old politicians, are, they're going to pass away, they're getting yeah. older. Yeah. The new generation have something to give back to Nigeria. Yeah. So in terms of understanding that systems have been put in place, people are now like, in the Instagram has opened a lot of like has opened a lot of stuff. Technology has changed a lot. Social media has changed a lot of stuff. Plus, people that probably didn't have the knowledge, the basic knowledge, are having to see how things are. So eventually, what you're going to see will become a revolution where people think. We, we, we need to have the same thing. We right. need to have a better life. We I don't know if you guys know about the NSAS protest. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, so those are the kind of revolution that would take place mm-hmm. and bring about a change. Mm-hmm. So for even people listening to, you, to, to us today that might be young, the opportunity lies in where you come from. Mm-hmm. We, most of us, or some of you are born in the UK. Yeah. We were opportune. We came here. We had whatever we had. We had our life. We had a build up to see that we get yeah. we get our British passport and all that. But you guys are lucky. No, no, <laughs> So if you look at it well, it's always about even if you have a British passport, yeah. they would always still mention where you're, you're from. Yeah, of course. Either you're Indian, even either you're African. African. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's always important to remember where you come from and see what value can I add. Uh, so I always take people back to Nigeria and show them opportunities. Mm. There's a lot of opportunities. There's, you've got many of resources, not just real estate. Mm. There's so many opportunities. Yeah, and is a big one as well. that's, yeah. that's a massive one, that's a massive industry. So understanding there is a lot of opportunities from agriculture, tech, even uh, music. Mm. There's so many things coming due. And in the place of, look at the numbers, you have over 200 million people in Nigeria. So just look at the numbers. And what I always say to people from a good case study, anytime I fly to Nigeria, on the flight, we'll probably have a minimum of about 20 white people going to Nigeria. So why are they going there? If you go to Nigeria, you see the Chinese people. They've got their own places in Nigeria. This will understand opportunities. And it's high time for young people, for all the people that are not seen it, to start to learn and understand there's massive opportunities. We took advantage of opportunity over 15 years ago, mm. and it's worked really well for yeah, us. Right, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, look, we're on the Property Strategy podcast, so we want to talk about property. Mm. So you know, I want to know about your first couple of deals that you did. Okay. Okay, specifically, and yeah, how do you get started? Yeah, my, my first deal, I'll never forget that, was... The, 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 the lies of uh, Queen Elizabeth line, <laughs> which uh, was Abbeywood. Uh, I remember, oh. yeah, so I was one of the first people to buy an Abbeywood. Wow. And because uh, what I used to do was I started buying off-plan properties. Okay. 
So back in those days when before before we had a recession, yeah. it was easier to get to mortgages. So we could easily go to like the likes of Barrett, right. the big developers, yeah. buy off plan. Okay. So then I could buy like five properties yeah. and then sell it on. Mm -hmm. Some of them would get a mortgage. After like six months, we sell on. Mm -hmm. So there was always the opportunity. So that was where I started my residential uh, property from. But in the line of the residential, I then started seeing opportunities in commercial, which is where we started going into commercial, which wow. the journey still remained us because while I was even doing residential, I was going back to Nigeria mm -hmm. because I saw that mm, I can do the same thing in the UK, in Nigeria. Wow. So my mind was settled around, okay, Nigeria, but there's one big stuff because I always tell people about understanding the story because it wasn't all pleasant. Mm -hmm. What people see now is like, oh, this guy has done this, has done that. Yeah. But no, it wasn't so pleasant because while we're still doing the flip of uh, uh, buy to let and offline properties, yeah. I was still trying to find and identify something key, which is purpose. Mm -hmm. So I was still, remember I said I was in a lot of businesses. Right, right. I had the telecommunication, I had the printing press. Yeah. So I was thinking businesses like this, I was making money from the UK, right. let me invest in this, let me right. do that. Direction and purpose yeah, yeah. of what I was doing. Because what I was doing there was trying to do a lot of business. Right. And when people say to me, what do you do? Ah, I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of stuff. I, I buy, sell, I do this, I do that. But I didn't start understanding something that was important, which is called purpose, mm -hmm. and which a lot of people don't understand. Even in property, you need to understand your purpose in property. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't understand the purpose, you're just going to be copying everyone. So he's doing HMO, he's doing rent to rent. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing I need to do. Yeah. But if you understand your purpose, you become different. Okay. And I was able to get someone that was a mentor, mm -hmm. which is uh, a guy called Miles Morrow. Oh, he's yeah. passed away now. So I, I, I yeah, yeah. Wow, I listen to a lot of his videos. He, he's, he's, that's the biggest pressure for me. He was, he was that, that he's was like, that for me. He was, he was my mentor from far off. Wow. Because I was trying to identify my purpose. Mm -hmm. Because remember what I said, it wasn't clear. Right. Because I was doing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Selling, coming from the background of selling, mm -hmm. you just think I'm a businessman. Yeah. But that wasn't the purpose. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I just started listening to Miles Morrow, right. understanding my purpose. Mm -hmm. And from there, I was able to identify. Because it's like saying now, if I'm going to ask you, if I would meet you as Gokyo Aki and say, okay and I want to save your name on my phone mm -hmm. I need to think about what you do mm -hmm. because it's easy for me to say Goke Property mm -hmm. uh, Podcast mm -hmm. simple because I know you as you guys are that's, that's what you guys do right. but if I meet Sammy that does a lot of businesses right. I don't know who is he Sammy business guy right. London right. like it just does, do you understand yeah. and I said I didn't find that I needed to get that clarity mm -hmm. and in the place of what I said to you remember the biggest stuff is still my faith. Mm -hmm. I was able to find the understanding of my purpose in a place of prayer, right. where after listening to the likes of Miles Morrow, I had to then started kind of searching out what God's purpose was for me. Right. And that was where I was able to get clarity. Mm -hmm. I was moving back to Nigeria to continue my real estate venture in Nigeria, but the purpose then came from identifying commercial properties. Mm -hmm. So there was a big gap it's still a big, a massive market that we, we started in, yeah. which was in the D1 sector, a place of worship. Okay. So churches struggle with buildings in time of finding a place of worship. Wow. So I was able to come in and then see that this is a massive struggle. Why I understood my purpose. Was like, issues? So issues is this for, if you're a faith person, for example, yeah. you see that churches would need spaces to, to meet. Yeah. Members need spaces Absolutely. in every area, which is part of like coming as, as an African, it's part of our lifestyle. It, you're either a Muslim, you're either a Christian, you either have a belief system. And within the community, those spaces were always a major problem to find. Mm -hmm. So if you find a church building, for, for example, you can have 40 churches wanting to buy the same building. Right. And remember, not just churches, Muslims, right. Hindus, right. different faith groups looking for the same building and that same building developers are also looking for those buildings so i thought what would be the best way for me to see that i come in with a creative way we then started turning warehouses right. to churches right. we came up with creative ways of turning bingo buildings into churches right. we then started turning uh police station mm -hmm. courthouses into churches mm -hmm. so it's just identifying what can be done with those buildings mm -hmm. And that was like the start for me into the commercial sector. Wow. So went into that and I saw like, this is huge. Mm. The only guys who were actively involved in this stuff were 
my English counterpart. Right. But those guys were only speaking from a place of the knowledge of the properties. But I came in as a fake person. Right. Remember that, understanding your strategy. Mm. My strategy was, I'm a fake person. Mm. I could understand what the pastor's issues were. Pastors would speak from a place of faith. Mm. I could understand faith, right. and I could understand the reality. Mm. So telling them, okay, faith without work is, is dead. Right. So in time of pastors saying, God has told me I want to buy a building. It's three million pounds, right. but I, we need to pray. We need to find this money. Pastor, the first thing my English counterpart would say is, where is the proof of fund? Right. And the pastor is <laughs> saying true. to you, I'm praying for it. I'm praying for it. It's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. And I started educating them. Mm. First and first is the education, mm. which is part of the journey right. for, for me, which I kind of realized was missing in the community. Mm. So I started educating them. Let's put your finance in place, mm. your savings in place. You can have creative way of getting members to save towards this building. Mm. If you own a building, it's better than you renting. Mm. Because what we have in our community is we rent a lot. Yeah. We don't understand the process of ownership. Sure. So I started educating them on how to put those structures in place. Mm. And that was that was the beginning from free clients. We're able to have 3,000 clients. Wow. So that was, that was like the huge good. From there, we then move into investment yeah. where we started buying stuff ourselves and then development with, with the churches was it then you were sourcing so I started as what you classify in the world of property as a sourcer yeah. so sourcing those properties so commercial yeah, yeah. So yeah. exactly so there was commission structure of about 2.5% mm -hmm. so imagine setting something for about 5 million or 3 million mm -hmm. we're able to do that so I was able to start getting instruction and what I did that was that was different was I was able to make the pastors understand what my calling was, okay. which is this is what I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm here to support you. I'm here right. to help you. I'm here to make things easier for you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to engage with sellers to make sure that your best interest is represented. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people saw that this is different. And this also, this guy is a third person. Mm -hmm. I remember I'm also, you look at my name, Somi Ade. Guke is Nigerian, yeah. is our brother, is our son, is going to look out for our interests. Yeah. So it's all, that was the step of kind of getting into that in supporting them. That's wow. amazing, man. That's amazing. I think that it, it, number one, I, I feel like um, it, it speaks to the audience because mm. a lot of people talk about making money and all that stuff, but yeah. you know, if you can make money and make impact at the same time, I said, that's a very special thing you can do. You know yeah. I mean? So for you, for, for you need to find that, that gap in the market and be able to do that. That, that is. It makes sense. It makes that's, sense. That's, 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 that's right. It, it's obviously finding what people would remember you for right. as a solution provider. Mm -hmm. If you're able to find solution, money will come. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people calling me and asking me stuff, how do I make money? Find, provide a solution. Mm -hmm. If you're able to get a solution, money will come. It's, like, it, it's a key thing for me, obviously as a fake person, there's that element of what drives me, which from the holy word, they say, seek first the kingdom right. and every other thing will be added. So in time of, I was providing a service for the kingdom mm -hmm. and the rest was easy because it would then meet my need. Yeah. But at the same time, while I was doing the stuff for the kingdom, then God started opening opportunities yeah. for us also to see that we can start putting money together, mm -hmm. getting fundings in place, mm -hmm. where a lot of the challenges of the churches were, if we're trying to buy the same building, you might have five 10 developers trying to buy the same right, building. Right, right. You might have other interest groups trying to buy the same building. Mm. So we then started putting funds in place mm. by family and friends, buying those buildings and selling them as a profit. Mm. So that was where the growth came in. So from buying different bingo buildings, mm. church buildings, different kind of stuff you that... convert them then? So you buy them? Convert them or you buy them and sell them off? So we buy, we can also refurbish. Mm. So we have a tip. So now we've grown because now we cover development. Right. We investment consultancy so it's a big team mm -hmm. so from seeing the seeing the need which is always important find that need mm -hmm. so we saw the need mm -hmm. after buying the building the churches would need someone to refurbish it right. so even when we buy this building i give you a good example mm -hmm. like we were the first people to turn a cot into a church mm -hmm. but no one saw that right. when people go to the court they see a small building right. but i saw an opportunity right. We could knock the walls down. We could knock a few things down and then make that a place where people can gather together. Mm -hmm. So from buying the first one, we're able to turn that into a thousand-seater auditorium. Mm -hmm. And this was spaces where people never saw that. Mm -hmm. So it's always seen, and that's what I tell people about, what property is the ability to see what others can see. Right. That's the key strategy around property. Mm -hmm. If you're going to build a world around property, 
it's not there is no signs around it it's just you finding what others cannot see how do I identify things that people can't see so we start looking at the court buildings and saying yeah I could turn this to this from one to three four we just started doing that same as police stations so it was easy for us to see this and even bingo buildings the old the old uh, bingo buildings the old theater buildings where people didn't I see like you, 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 were you involved with the new one or no? <laughs> no new okay. one new one like, like that one was a bit about odd buildings but <laughs> no no new one so, fun enough my one of my buildings is just down the road from New Wine. Okay, okay. The old uh, Woolwich uh, Magistrate Court okay. is literally a few minutes away from New Wine. Right. Yeah, what it's it it's a church. Oh, wow. Yeah, church it's, it's MFM. Mountain, Mountain of Fire. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. So you're still doing that today? So, so our business, so 